in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Adrian Van Leiden has known for months that Martin Payton has a letter from her late husband, an incriminating letter. A letter which states, according to Peyton, that Adrian was responsible for Dr. Van Leiden's death. Tonight, she's determined to put an end to Martin Peyton's tyranny, his incredible hold over her. You didn't expect to find Philip's letter anywhere that obvious, did you, my dear? Or was it a much safer place? Oh, come, come, Adrian. You've been discovered in compromising circumstances before. I want to see that letter, Martin. You've taken my word for it. That's good. How do you know it exists? I want to read it. What makes it of such prime importance? Martin, I have a right to see it. I've done your dirty work. What more do you want from me? Only your hand in holy matrimony. It'll be a lovely ceremony. I've ordered several bouquets of your favorite white flowers. You know, when Stephen and Betty were married, he stood over there while she descended the staircase. It was all rather elaborate. But I imagine you prefer something more simple. Oh, stop it, Martin. Is it that distasteful? Oh, please. But you'll go through with it, won't you, my dear? You'll marry me for the same reason you married Philip. I married Philip for I know him. why. I have it in writing. Let me read it, Martin. I'll read it to you. <laughs> it's burned in my memory. Every word, every comma. I can see it this moment, as plainly as if it were carved across this, this lovely likeness. It arrived by special messenger the night Philip took his life. No. Philip's death was an accident. Oh, was it? No one who had read that letter could think so. It was scrawled in his hurried, illegible hand. But it was even more hurried and more illegible than usual. The salutation was short and simple. Martin, with an elongated dash. You can see where the tip of the pencil then snapped off as he pressed down at the beginning of it. The message was simple, too. Though it seemed rather cryptic, when I first glanced over it. Please understand. In this choice, I will find what I have lost. Lost in her laughter. And a second paragraph. I can no longer think of myself as a man. I can no longer think. Forgive me. Philip. Look at me. Look at me. Laugh. Laugh. Martin, no. When I received the message, I didn't understand it. Although, of course, I knew that he was referring to you. But I didn't understand what he meant by forgive me, what his choice was, what he hoped to regain by making it. I thought perhaps he'd just given up his project. But in the morning, when I read the story in the paper of his accidental fall to death, then I understood. It was the only choice you left him. With his values, it was the only way he knew how to regain what you stripped from him his dignity, 
is self-respect. He gave up everything. And he asked me to forgive him. Well, don't ask me to forgive you, Mrs. Adrian Van Dyke. You destroyed one of the greatest men, one of the greatest minds that ever lived. With a laugh, a cold and sensitive laugh that drove him to his destruction. Hi, Dad. I'm in a hurry. What do you want? You'll get a ticket for doing more than 10 miles an hour on this street. You got something for me in that sack? No, it's just a millionth refill of my digitalis bill. You want one? All they do is make you sleepy. I'm known around here as Digitalis Droopy, the drugstore drag. Fine. Can you come up for a minute? No, I You don't I have gotta... to be at work till 6. You don't want me up there. I saw the lights go out last night after I knocked. You weren't fooling anybody. You were there. You just didn't want to open the door to your old man. So, if that's the way you feel about it, okay. You don't have to come sniveling up to me trying to be nice. In fact, I'd rather you didn't. You can't count a con man, little lady. Excuse me, uh, are you Norman Harrington? I've been sent down here from a national news magazine to do a story on you. I think you've got me mixed up with my brother. He's big news, I'm bad news. Oh, they told me you'd be modest. Now, you'll like to see some of my credentials. Here's a driver's license there. And there's a social security card, library card. Who wound you up? Am I coming on too strong? A little like Charlie's Chili, if you know what I mean. Listen, I went down to the dock looking for you. I thought you were brown bagging it these days. Well, we got up a little late this morning, and Rita didn't have time to fix me a sandwich. How was Rita? She's, uh... Would you like to sit in the back room for a minute? Sure. What's up? Well, it's no big deal, but I just didn't want to talk about it in front of half the town. Shoot. I felt it. What? The baby. Rita put my hand on her stomach, and I actually felt it moving around inside. Oh, no, no big deal. Hey, that's life. Well, I bet you flipped. You said you were you came by the docks to see me? Anything special? No. Well, sort of, yeah. Dr. Rossi was over. Rossi? He's worried. I thought he was the one that told me to keep my mouth shut. Listen, he's treating Rita. Now, he has to be concerned about how you're going to handle things with Eddie. You know, I thought doctors were supposed to keep everything confidential. But I guess that's what happens when you start thinking of them as friends instead of little men in the white suits that take care of you. He is your friend. Well, if I would have wanted him to know about Eddie cracking my rib, I would have had him treat me. Wait a minute, Norm. What's this about... Hey, what's this about Eddie cracking your rib? Isn't that what Dr. Rossi said? No, that isn't what Dr. Rossi said. But now I can understand why he was so worried. I guess I owe him an apology, then. He doesn't need an apology. You want to talk about it? No, it's over. You cool? Yeah. Listen to me. You know, the other night, I, I put the skis in the car and I shot up to the snow. Now, from up there, everything seems to look a lot smaller. Why don't you take Rita and go for a couple of days, huh? Well, I've been thinking about it. Well, do it. Take my car. Get, it's got AM, FM, radio, chains, good heater. Maybe I will. Norm, if you decide to go, go incognito. That way nobody will sit at your table with a lot of questions and all the answers. <laughs> 